Welcome to the Intro to Logic video on affirming the consequent. To begin with, keep in mind that a fallacy is simply a mistake of reasoning. And here, what we mean by formal fallacy is simply a mistake of reasoning that has to do with formal symbolic logic. Affirming the consequent is an invalid form of reasoning from a conditional and the consequent of the conditional to the antecedent of the conditional. So here we have the basic form of affirming the consequent. First, you need a conditional, and then you take the, anti or the consequent of that conditional, which in this case is Q, and you try to derive the antecedent of the conditional, which is P. Now let's take a look at an example of affirming the consequent. Consider the following reasoning. If you live in San Diego, then you live in California. You live in California, so, or therefore, you live in San Diego. This is a form of affirming the consequent, and we know that because we have a conditional, and as our second premise, we have the consequent of that conditional. So the then part is the consequent, which is you live in California, and here we have that as our second premise, and we've tried to deduce the antecedent using the conditional and the consequent. You live in San Diego is the antecedent. Now, just taking a minute to think about the reasoning in this argument, you can clearly see that it's bad reasoning. The mere fact that premises one and two are true does not entail premise three. So if you live in San Diego, then you live in California. You live in California, therefore you live in San Diego, just doesn't follow, right? It could be the case that premise one and two are true, but you don't live in San Diego. Maybe you live in San Francisco, or Redding, or Los Angeles. You could list any place in California other than San Diego, and premises one and two could still be true. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have the reasoning. You are a college student if you attend BGSU. You are a college student, therefore you attend BGSU. Now, right off the bat, you might find yourself thinking something is fishy with this argument. It doesn't seem like it follows from premises one and two that you attend BGSU. It doesn't seem like the mere fact that if you attend BGSU, then you're a college student, you are a college student, therefore you attend BGSU follows. It could be the case that premise one, if you attend BGSU, then you are a college student, and premise two, you are a college student, are both true but the conclusion is false. It may be the case that you're a college student because you attend a different school in the area. Maybe you go to Toledo or Ohio State or Michigan or what have you. So we know something's fishy from the very beginning. Next, we can analyze the argument more closely by putting it into symbolic form. So we have a conditional in the first premise we can say, if you attend BGSU, where you attend BGSU equals B, then you are a college student. We'll symbolize that assertion with the letter C. You are a college student, would then be C. And therefore, you attend BGSU, would then be B. So our argument in formal form is if B, then C. C, therefore, B. And if you've ever studied affirming the consequent before, you know right away that this form of reasoning is a case of affirming the consequent. And why do you know that? Well, you have a conditional as one of your premises, and then you have the consequent of that conditional as your other premise, and you've used these two premises to try to derive the antecedent, which is B. And that is a clear case of affirming the consequent. This has been an intro to logic video on affirming the consequent.